Lady calls cops on a black dad with a white kid. She instantly regrets it. The story unfolds in Greenwood Park, a lively hub of community activity. Every weekend, families gather here. Children's laughter blends with the cheerful barks of dogs, and the aroma of food from nearby vendors fills the air. It's a place where city life pauses briefly to savor moments of leisure and connection. Mark, a black dad in his late 30s with a kind demeanor and an easy smile, is at the center of this idyllic scene today. He spends his afternoon with Lily, his adopted six-year-old daughter, who sports a mop of unruly blonde curls that bounce as she runs. Their bond is palpable. They chase each other around the playground, Mark never far behind Lily's speedy, zigzagging paths. Their laughter is a clear sign of their deep familial love and joy in each other's company. Observing from a nearby bench, sipping her iced tea, is Cielo. In her early 50s, Cielo is a fixture in community events. From school fundraisers to neighborhood watches, she takes pride in her role as a community guardian but this sense of duty sometimes crosses into overzealousness due to her unexplored prejudices. Today, something about the sight of Mark and Lily playing together strikes a chord of concern within her. Instead of seeing a father and daughter enjoying a beautiful day, she sees an unusual pairing that does not fit her narrow expectations of what a family should look like. Her perception, clouded by bias, sets the stage for a sequence of actions driven by misunderstanding and fear. Mark and Lily engage in a lively game of tag, their laughter a delightful sound against the backdrop of chatting families and playful dogs. Lily, with her blonde curls flying, maneuvers with surprising agility, her laughter ringing clear as she evades Mark's playful attempts to catch her. The game takes a sudden turn when Lily, looking back to tease her father with a playful grin, doesn't see the raised root of an old oak tree. Her foot catches, and she tumbles to the ground with a startled cry that slices through the ambient noise of the park. Instantly, the laughter stops, replaced by the sharp, concerned tones of a child in distress. Mark's reaction is immediate. He dashes to her side, scooping her up into his arms with a gentle efficiency that speaks to countless similar moments of minor childhood accidents. His voice is soothing as he checks her for injuries, his large hands gentle as he brushes away tears and dirt from her face. From her vantage point, CLO's observation turns to concern. Her initial amusement at their game darkens as she interprets the scene through a lens marred by deep-seated stereotypes and unexamined fears. The sight of Lily's tears and Mark's urgent care conjures a narrative in CLO's mind that is disconnected from the loving father-daughter dynamic before her. Driven by a misguided sense of duty, Cielo reaches for her phone with trembling hands. The whispers of prejudice tell her she's witnessing something sinister, an assumption fueled more by the colors she sees than the context she misunderstands. As she dials the police, her actions set in motion a chain of events that will challenge her perceptions and force her to confront the biases that have shaped her response. Cielo watches intently as Mark tenderly consoles Lily, his large hands delicately patting her back and his voice a soothing balm. Despite the clear signs of a loving father comforting his hurt child, CLO's perception is colored by deep-seated stereotypes and a narrow understanding of family dynamics that don't align with what she sees. To her, the image of a black man with a white child in distress evokes a story far removed from the reality before her. As Mark reassures Lily, promising her treats and gently checking her scraped knee, CLO's internal conflict intensifies. Part of her recognizes the innocence of their interaction, noticing other parents nearby offering sympathetic smiles toward Mark, acknowledging a scene they too are familiar with. Yet another part, the one tainted by societal conditioning and unchallenged preconceptions, whispers doubts and warnings. Her hands grip her phone tightly, the device a potential catalyst for action in a scenario she doesn't fully understand. She thinks of her own children, the protective instincts that have always guided her, and wonders if she would appreciate a stranger's intervention if their roles were reversed. Yet the what-ifs loom large in her mind. Driven by the horror stories and sensational news segments that often paint men like Mark as figures of suspicion, Silo glances around, 
seeking either validation or a reason to dismiss her fears from the faces of other park goers. She finds a mixture of disinterest and mild curiosity, none mirroring the alarm she feels. Her heart races as she grapples with a decision, the weight of potential outcomes pressing down on her. Finally, her sense of duty, however misguided, overpowers her reservations. She dials 911, her voice slightly quivering as she speaks with the dispatcher. There's a man here who I believe might be harming a little girl, she reports, her eyes never leaving Mark and Lily. She describes Mark, her language unintentionally laced with bias, painting him more as a suspect than a concerned parent. As she hangs up, a wave of anxiety washes over her. Silo wonders if she has done the right thing, the seeds of doubt continuing to grow even as she watches the police approach. She stands there, frozen by the unfolding events. Her internal turmoil, a stark contrast to the calming reassurances Mark continues to offer his daughter. The sound of sirens subtly pierces the normal hum of the park, growing louder as two police cars pull up to the curb. Mark, still comforting Lily, looks up with a mix of confusion and concern. He sets Lily gently on her feet, holding her close as the officers approach. Lily, Sensing the seriousness of the situation, grips Mark's hand tightly, her earlier calm replaced by growing apprehension. As the police officers make their way through the park, the atmosphere shifts palpably. The light-heartedness drains away, replaced by an air of tension and curiosity. Bystanders, drawn by the arrival of the police, begin to gather around, forming an uneasy crowd. Whispers and speculative glances are exchanged as everyone tries to piece together the scene unfolding before them. One of the officers, a stern-looking man with a notepad ready, addresses Mark directly. Sir, we received a call about a potential situation involving this child. Can you explain your relationship to her? His tone, though professional, carries an underlying suspicion that makes Mark's heart sink. Mark maintains his composure though his voice betrays a slight tremor. Officer, this is my daughter, Lily. I adopted her three years ago. He tries to keep the situation light for Lily's sake, squeezing her hand in reassurance, but the gravity of the accusation weighs heavily on him. He reaches into his pocket with his free hand, pulling out his wallet to show pictures and adoption papers that he carries for just such unforeseen situations. Lily, overwhelmed by the growing crowd and the serious men questioning her father, starts to whimper, burying her face in Mark's leg. Mark strokes her hair, his protective instincts fully triggered as he continues to explain their situation to the officers. The police, upon reviewing the documents and listening to Mark's calm yet firm explanation, begin to ease their demeanor. However, the initial coldness of their approach has already sown seeds of discomfort among the onlookers, many of whom now look on with a mix of guilt and embarrassment. Silo, from a distance, watches the exchange with increasing unease. Seeing the documents and witnessing the bond between Mark and Lily, she starts to realize the magnitude of her mistake. The scene she had interpreted so wrongly now unfolds with a clarity that fills her with regret. As the officers start to wrap up their questioning, acknowledging the misunderstanding, Silo feels a profound sense of remorse for the distress she has caused to an innocent family. The police officers, having scrutinized the adoption papers and photos Mark provided, acknowledge their validity with a nod. They lower their notebooks and exchange a glance, signaling a shift in their approach. However, despite the confirmation of Mark's story, the mood remains charged. The crowd's murmuring increases, a mixture of relief and residual suspicion lingering in the air. Mark, feeling the weight of public scrutiny, keeps his arm around Lily, who remains close to his side, visibly shaken by the ordeal. His voice, steady but firm, he addresses the officers and the onlookers. I always carry these documents, not because I think I should have to prove my relationship with my daughter, but because I know situations like this can arise. The police, sensing the tension and the need to defuse the situation, attempt to reassure Mark and the crowd. One officer, speaking louder so others can hear, says, We appreciate your cooperation, sir. 
We're sorry for the inconvenience, but we have to respond to calls with due diligence. His tone is apologetic, yet the underlying implication that such checks were routine does little to ease the discomfort. Lily, still clinging to Mark, looks up at him with wide, fearful eyes. Mark reassures her with a gentle squeeze of her shoulder, whispering that everything is okay, but his gaze across the gathered faces reflects his frustration and hurt. His words to the officers carry a weight that resonates with some in the crowd, who now look sheepish, realizing the role their silent assumptions may have played in escalating the incident. Silo, who had initiated the call to the police, stands at the edge of the gathering, her initial resolve crumbling under the weight of her misguided actions. The reality of seeing a family subjected to such scrutiny because of her call fills her with remorse. She steps forward hesitantly, compelled by a growing sense of guilt to make amends. As the police wrap up, ensuring there are no further concerns and reminding the crowd to be more discerning in future incidents, Mark takes a deep breath, preparing to address Silo and the rest of the onlookers. He recognizes this as a teachable moment, not just for his daughter, but for everyone present, about the dangers of assumptions and the impact of racial biases. The officers leave, and the crowd begins to disperse, but the echoes of what just transpired linger. Silo approaches Mark slowly, her steps uncertain, her apology ready but unsure of its reception. Mark, seeing her approach, readies himself for a conversation he knows is necessary, not just for his and Lily's sake, but for the community's understanding and growth. Mark, with Lily still by his side, turns to face Silo as she approaches. The remaining onlookers, sensing the gravity of the personal exchange about to unfold, give them space but listen intently. CLO's expression is fraught with regret, her earlier certainty replaced by doubt and shame. I want to explain something, Mark begins, his voice steady but filled with an underlying strain from the ordeal. I became Lily's father, not just out of a desire to be a dad but because her biological parents couldn't provide her with the safety and love she needed. They were in a very dark place, struggling with issues that made their home unsafe and toxic. He pauses, ensuring that Lily is distracted with a small toy from his pocket, sparing her the harsher truths of her past. When the opportunity came to give Lily a stable home, I didn't think twice. I knew what she needed was a chance for a normal, happy life, something her biological parents due to their abusive and toxic behaviors, couldn't offer her. Mark's words flow with a mixture of sadness and firmness, educating Silo and the onlookers on the complexities behind many adoptions. It's not just about rescuing a child, it's about providing what every child inherently deserves, security, love, and a nurturing environment. That's what I strive to give her every single day. Silo listens her eyes moistening as she absorbs the gravity of her misunderstanding and the depth of Mark's commitment to his daughter. The reality of her prejudice against this devoted father, based solely on his appearance and her preconceived notions, weighs heavily on her. I'm so sorry, she finally murmurs, her voice barely audible. I misunderstood what I saw. I thought I was helping, but I didn't see the whole picture. I just jumped to a conclusion without thinking. Mark nods slowly, the tension in his posture easing slightly. I appreciate your apology, Silo. It's important to recognize how quickly situations can be misjudged, especially when biases cloud our judgment. We all have a lot to learn about compassion and understanding. His words not only address Silo, but serve as a lesson to the bystanders, reminding everyone of the dangers of snap judgments and the need for empathy in a community. CLO steps back, giving Mark and Lily space, her stance humble and reflective. As the crowd disperses, a new sense of understanding begins to take root among them, sparked by the ordeal Mark and Lily faced and the dignified manner in which they handled the misunderstanding. Mark takes Lily's hand, ready to leave the park, the day's events leaving a bittersweet feeling, but also a hopeful glimpse into the potential for personal growth and community healing.